All right, I'm super excited about this video actually. I've been looking forward to this for like two months now, I think, two or three months looking to teach this. I was still trying to learn it during that time and I was trying to figure out the best way to teach it. And I think I come to the conclusion that it's not something you can teach in full because of the nature of what you're about to learn. Okay, and what we're going to learn is something called Ask Data. And you probably heard about it before. The name seems so simple because it is, but what it is is so freaking crazy, but you're going to love it. So let me show you. Let's go to those published data sources that we did. All right, and the one we're going to open is Superstore. And the reason I'm using this one, I know a lot of people have complained that it's like, stop using Superstore, but it's just really good for this example because the data sets are just so diverse. You've got dates in there, you've got um, different combinations, grouping, and all that kind of stuff, so it's great. So if I open this, right, I'm not gonna see any dashboards, obviously, because it's just a data source, okay? But what I am gonna see is this Ask Data. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize this, right? Can I full screen that? I can, right? And here's what Ask Data is. You have a data set that has been loaded, okay? Tableau has analyzed this data set. What that means, I have no idea, but here's what you can do. You can ask your data a question in plain English. That is what's trippy about this. So it's called natural language processing. And the idea is it can read your request in English and transform it to a data request in a way that a computer would have to be told via programming. So in SQL, for example, let me get out of this full screen. All right, so let's say I'm doing, um, I'm gonna do a notepad, right? Let's say I'm doing SQL or something. I have to explicitly tell it, select field one, from you know project where you know i have to be very explicit and i have to um, i have to know the programming language in order to interface with that system with this you don't have to you just need to know english so here in my superstore data i've got things like you know customer name manufacturer segment ship dates i've got subcategories i've got sales profits and so on and let's say i'm not a programmer I'm not a designer, but I know how to Google, right? It works just like that. Obviously not as powerful as Google. Google's a freak, but this is pretty good. So let's say I want to see an analysis of sales, okay? So I want to show, show me total sales, okay? And it can decipher that and go, do you mean the sum of sales? Yes, I do. So if you click on it, it will build you a dashboard, right? Got it, right? It's actually told me there's three million dollars, okay, worth of sales. But I need to know a little bit more than that. Let's say I want to see it by region. Um, show me by region. All right, so you can see there by region. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, by region. So I click on that, and it's going to split up my data, right? And then I go, well, I also want to see it by category, right? So we go by category, right? There you go. And it's building my dashboard. I mean, this is just insane. Okay. So let's say I want to go show me by country, right? So now I want to get a little bit more granular, but I don't want to see every country. Let's say I want to filter something. Okay. So let's say I only want to see, right? It's actually showing me in a map. So I don't want a map. So I can click here on the right and switch it back to a bar chart. Okay. So now I've got all my countries right now maybe i'm not interested in every country maybe i'm not listen, uh, interested in every region maybe i'm only interested in north right so i can go filter by north region right filter region to north right or i can say um north region only all right let's see if you can do it there you go filter region so you can actually translate what you're asking, and look at it, it's filtering. We haven't programmed or anything. So when Tableau pioneered the whole drag and drop, I was already like, wow. And now you can just type it in. This is this is like a massive game changer, right? So I can show, show that. Now, let's say I wanna do other things. Um, so I've got order date here. So I only wanna see for 2019. What happens if I type 2019, right? 
Uh, so it hasn't got anything with order date. So let's see if we can put it in. Let's see how smart it is. And this is the thing about trying to teach um, natural language processing. You just can't teach it because there's so many ways to actually ask a question. The idea is go to your desk, to your computer, whatever, and play. Ask it as many things as you can and see how smart it is. And it's pretty smart. So here, sum of sales at least when and by order dates year. So maybe I don't want to do that. Let's just say by order date year. Maybe I can do it that way. There we go. Order dates year. Okay. So now I've got the years in there. Right. So we've got that. What else can we do? So you can do all sorts of other things. Again, I can change this. And one great thing you can use for this is to get the analysis started. Okay, so from here, let's say I want to save this dashboard. I can actually click here and go save as, and it will save it as an actual dashboard. If I want to do further analysis, I can download that workbook and then bring it into Tableau Desktop and start doing my analysis there. Okay, let's do another one because I want to keep playing with this thing. So I've got a new sheet button here at the bottom. Let's do that. All right now, this time let's look at sales and profit or something. So maybe. I want to see the average sales versus the average profit, right? So let's say average sales versus average profit. And let's see if we can actually do it. There you go, average sales and profit. So that's going to do a scatter plot, right? Now it's only got one point, right? Because we haven't introduced any granularity. So let's say um, by manufacturer, right? So we'll bring that in, and it's going to introduce that granularity, you know? And straight away, like I'm not, let's say I'm not a programmer. This really changes it. This will give my managers and other people the ability to ask these questions that just they just never would have in the past, right? So that's how you would do that. Let's do another one. Um, I could do other kinds of, let's do a map, right? Let's go show me cities. And notice I did the plurals. In here, is that how you spell cities? I don't know. So I go by city. I'm an analyst because I'm not good at English. <laughs> All right. So now we've got this on a map. I mean, just like that. All right. We'll do another one. Let's say, oh, I want to show you something called synonyms as well. So let's say I want to reference manufacturer, right? But let's say in my line of business, we don't call them manufacturers. Let's say we call them vendors. So if I type in vendors, right? It can't find it, right? So what you can do to make it more, make your data sets more relevant to your business is add what's called synonyms, names that you have specifically for your business. So let's say manufacturers, we call it a number of things. So you can ho hover over manufacturer, click on this pencil thingy, and you can add synonyms. So let's say we call them vendors, we call them third party or third party, uh, I spell party, third party, um, we call them business partners, right? And what's happened there? Ah, oh, right, because apparently you can't have them all at once, right? So you have to do them one at a time. My bad, right? So that's your first one. What's the next one? Third party, right? What's your next one? So third party with a dash, right? And let's say business partners, right? So you can add as many of these as you want. Okay. And then we close it. So now if I go, um, did I actually add vendors? <laughs> I did. Okay. So if you go show me my vendors, all right, it's going to go by manufacturer. All right. So this makes it easier for other people as well, because that's your language. Okay, now let's show something else. Let's say I want to see who are my top vendors. Okay, so let's say um, I want to go by sales, right? Because this is currently by records. So I can either go by sales, right? In which case it's going to give me a few things. It will just go sum of sales, right? Which is going to add another column, right? So let's actually do that. Let's go by sales, the first one. Right, so that's going to do a plot. Eh, not really what I wanted. Right, so we can press X, get rid of that. Let's go buy sales again. 
maybe what I mean is sum of sales. All right, so now it's doing a scatter, right? Maybe I don't want to scatter, I can do a bar. All right, so I can have side by side. Maybe I want to do a, let's try a heat map. Probably not going to show us very much. No, let's go back. Okay, and you can also request these views by typing. So you can go by tree map, all right, instead of a bar chart. So you can see the number of combinations. So let's go by region. All right, so it's just so smart right, how you can do all this stuff. Um, the other thing is, let's say I've got, let's actually do a new sheet. So I just want to do, um, let's say by profit. Okay. And what I want to do is, let's say I want to see the top 10 profiting com countries, right? So I can say by profit, um, top 10 by country, right? So here we go. Um, top 10 states by maximum sales, at least 10. So top 10 profit by country. Let's see what it can do. Top 10 countries by sum of profit. Okay, and then go by country. Because I don't think it's been added here. All right, there we go. Uh, by country, top 10 countries, uh, profit. Oh, see how this is not a aggregate, right? So these are individual points. So I can actually go by sum of profit, right? Sum of profit, or I can go by total profit, I believe, right? So again, it can find it, or I can click up here and just change it from a group by to a different aggregate. So I can say sum and go accept. So it should transform to a bar chart. Right, so you can see there is just heaps and heaps <laughs> that you can do, right? And if I wanted to play with this later on, I can just click on save, save as, right? Where we're gonna save it, let's just call ask data one. Let's save it in budget and show sheets as tabs and save, right? And then I can do further analysis from there. But that is basically how Ask Data works. I thought I would need a whole section, but it's just so simple in how it works and how smart it can be that it's really something you should just kind of have a play with and enjoy, right? So we'll leave it at that because the video is going a little bit long. And that's it. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time.